Coach, congratulations. Another big time comeback win for you. But uh, you're going to text Doc Rivers and thank him for producing a son who can put up 14 straight in the fourth. Yeah. You know, I've seen him do that before. You know, when he gets going like that, he's hard to stop. And, uh, you know, he's he's got a lot of toughness to him, mental toughness, physical toughness, the courage to take those shots. And uh, but we had a lot of guys step up in the second half and really fight. We didn't play well in the first half, but the resiliency, the toughness, the fighting, and we found a way to win in the end. And Julius, of course, had a monster game and, and Alfred was unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we needed we needed those guys to play like that. And Utah's a terrific team. They put a lot of pressure on you, and uh, we were fortunate to get the win. Next question it comes from Amanda Hadar, Knicks Digital. Hey, Coach, you get contributions from everyone on the team. Um, when one guy's down, the other one's picking up the pace. You know, how important is that for you to have a, a deep team, top to bottom, that can come in and contribute off the bench or starting? Well, it's huge, and, and that's the whole thing. We have a number of guys. Everyone is sacrificing something for the team, whether it's shots, minutes, maybe it's even the rotation, but there's a togetherness to the team. There, there's a, a workmanship that it allows the team to develop and get better each and every day, and there's a great spirit. And so when someone goes out and the next guy steps in, they're ready to go. And that's what we're going to need. I think when you look at the way this season is shaping up, not only for us, but for many teams in the league, whether it's, you know, the injury, uh, you know, the, the COVID protocol, whatever it might be, you need everyone. And so at some point in the season, everyone on the roster is going to get a chance. And when they get that chance, we want them to be ready. Next question comes from Mark Berman, New York Post. Uh, yeah, Tom, uh, what did you see from Julius? It looked like he had a very slow start, missing a lot of shots, and then coming on again in the second half. And uh, the second thing is you might have an update on Obi Toppin. Uh, yeah, I, I apologize for that uh, with regarding Obi. Uh, so he was evaluated uh, yesterday, uh, a good prognosis. He'll advance to the next stage. Uh, and there's going to be a progression to it because obviously that type of injury you got to be careful with. Uh, so he hasn't had any contact yet, but he's he's starting them running and jumping, and then we'll progress to, you know, two on two, three on three, four on four. But he's making good progress. Uh, when we just have to be patient. Next question comes from Bruce Back, NBC. Tom, how do you explain this team's comeback ability? And do you, as a coach, ever feel like you're out of the game? Uh, well, I never feel like you're out. The, the NBA is a long game. And I think uh, with the three-pointer being shot the way it is, you can make up ground quickly. And that's why no lead is safe and no, no deficit is impossible to overcome. And so we strive to be a 48-minute team. And right now, we're nowhere near that. So we know we have a lot of work to do, uh, but we believe because of you know the way we work, we can overcome things. And uh, I think there's a toughness to the team because of the work they put into each and every day. Next question comes from Steve Popper, Newsday. Hey, Tom, two things. C could you talk about the defense on Mitchell? And also just, do you enjoy yourself seeing a workman like win like that where maybe they don't have everything right early? Well, uh, you know, Mitchell is, is such a great player. Uh, you don't guard him individually. You have to guard him with your team. And he got some good looks that he normally makes. So, um, but it, uh, that type of player, you're going to have two and three guys on him at times. And so, uh, and that's taxing. And so I think the big thing is for us to learn from each and every game. So we got down early and uh, they had size on uh, Julius which presented some problems and we had a chance to work through it and, and sort of try to get ourselves going. And I thought Julius made a very good adjustment as well. Uh, and then with Alfred playing the way he was playing, that, that led to some other things. And then of course, Austin coming in uh, and, and playing the way he did, uh, that was big for us as well. Next question comes from Rebecca Harlow, MSG Network. 
Coach, 11 steals tonight. That part of your defense was consistent throughout the whole game. But in the second half, in terms of the stops that you were able to get, what shifted there? Did, what did you tell the guys? Did you do anything different? What did you see? Well, the big thing, I felt like we gave them too much in the, in the first half. Like, there was no ball pressure, and it was free and easy. So we tried to get into the ball more uh, and put more effort into things. And uh, it, when you get going, like we were struggling uh, offensively as well and turn the ball over and put them into the open floor. And when you do that, the, the, you know, the team gets confidence. And so they were very confident. And then, you know, we, we allowed them to just do whatever they wanted. And then once we got into them a little bit, uh, you know, it, it was beneficial towards us. But of course, you can't overlook the fact that they played the night before also. So we were fortunate this time to get the win. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things we have to work on tomorrow. Next question comes from Mike Vaccaro, New York Post. Tom, obviously, the numbers would indicate uh, how important Julius is to you. And when he wasn't, when he wasn't putting those numbers today, you guys struggled. And when he did, you guys came back. But beyond just the numbers, I mean, what, did, what is it beyond that that makes him so important to what makes you guys go? Well, he's, he's our engine. You know, he's, he plays with a lot of toughness. Uh, and there's a lot of multiple effort plays that he's making. But he's also playing very unselfishly. And so if you caught and you're open, he's going to hit you. Uh, he can handle the ball. He's got very good skills with the ball. I think those guys are very hard to guard. Uh, and his shooting has improved. And so I thought, uh, you know, he had some wide open looks, but he's, he's shot the three very well this year. Um, so that makes him even harder to guard and he could out quickly. So I think when you put centers on him, he, he can take him away from the basket and then crack him off to dribble. Or uh, you know, if they close short to him, he can shoot the shot. Um, so he, he's doing a lot of things for us really well. And then defensively, the rebounding, multiple effort. We're asking him to play backup center right now also. And so he's he's doing everything. And uh, playing big minutes, comes in the next day, works, takes care of his body, great with recovery, great in the film sessions. Uh, and it's the type of leadership that's invaluable to a team. We have time for two more questions. The next question comes from Steph Bondi, Daily News. Hey, Tom, I hope this isn't uh, repetitive with uh, Julius, but I don't know if he's ever been the guy before. I guess last season he was, but, it, you know, in L.A. he was young, and in New Orleans he had A.D. How do you think he's responding to be to being the guy and, and the number one player? Well, I think when you look at most players in this league, there's a progression to becoming uh, that type of player. They don't just get there overnight. There's steps that they have to take along the way. And I think he's done that. I think uh, each year he's gained experience. I think that's probably the most valuable uh, teacher. I think you learn through listening and trial and error is a big part of learning. So I think the, all the experiences he had with LA and then with New Orleans, and then to take all of that and then with the, the pause in the season, it allows you to take a step back and reflect and work on the things that you think could help you and things that you've learned over time. And probably the biggest thing that he did, he's in unbelievable shape. And it tells you the importance of being in great shape. And I think to be able to play the minutes that he's playing, I think he prepared himself to do that. And to be honest with you, to win games late, you have to be in great shape. Our last question comes from Ian Bagley, SNY. Tom, just because of your relationship with Doc, have you known Austin previously? Um, and if so, uh, what have you seen from him kind of over the years as he, as he is uh, over here in the NBA? Well, uh, I'll tell you one thing he's never lacked. Uh, he's never had a, a, a lack of confidence. I, I can recall when in 08 with Boston, we had all these Hall of Fame guys. And I think he was still in high school. And, you know, when he'd come up to visit his dad, he'd want to play all of them one-on-one. -on -one. And one, one day in particular, uh, Kevin Garnett, he, he, Kevin Garnett, doesn't want, he wouldn't want anyone to score on him. 
So he's been coming out to practice and you see Austin's in a full lather and Austin wants to play him. And so, and he, you know, Austin really believed that he could beat him. That's the mindset that he has. So he's never lacked the confidence and just watching him grow up and, you know, of course, go, going on to Duke and playing the way he did there and then uh, going on into the pros. And, you know, he always finds a way to work himself into a rotation, starting lineup. Uh, and, and again, I think a big part of the modern NBA is in not only having the, the shooting ability, but the ability to go off the dribble and then to also defend. And I think he's got, he checks all three of those boxes. Thank you, Coach. Yep, thank you. Julius, simple but super relevant question here. How much fun are you having right now playing this game, this game that you love? Uh, a lot of fun. I mean, we're all uh, – <laughs> it's a lot of fun, honestly, man. It's unfortunate that uh, we can't have our fans in here to uh, experience the energy of this team. But uh, we're all out there just playing hard, playing for each other, and – um, it's just amazing. It's amazing the growth of our team and um, the confidence that we have as a team is great. So uh, we just want to keep it going. Next question comes from Jonathan Macri. Julius, you are um, playing the best basketball of your career. Um, teams are obviously starting to game plan against you like we saw tonight. Um, how are you able to balance what these teams are throwing at you and still be able to come out and do like you did tonight and put the team on your back um, for portions of this game and come out with a win? Um, it's just a fine balance. You know, I honestly just try to take what the defense gives me. Uh, you know, I try to uh, study the teams, know what they like to do, uh, know where I can pick my spots and, and take advantage of things. And um uh, Honestly, my teammates are doing, just doing a great job uh, of just being in the right spots, being aggressive, being confident. And, um, you know, we're playing hard and playing together on both ends of the floor. So it's really just making my job easier. I'm just able to play and play off my teammates and, and just play with great energy. Next question comes from Bruce Beck, NBC. Julius, you are flirting with a triple-double very often here. How much pride are you taking as far as your passing, getting those assists? Uh, it's fun for me, honestly, uh, to see my teammates uh, come off ball screens or handoffs or uh, they double me in the post or whatever it is. And uh, to to make the right play and, and hit guys when they're open is uh, it's energizing for me. It's energizing for them. And uh, it just leads to us playing hard for each other on the defensive end. But uh, when we all know that we're going to come out uh, together and make the right play and, and pass and, and just play for each other, it's amazing. So uh, we're all having fun doing it. And. I'm having fun doing it as well. So. Next question comes from Mark Berman, New York Post. Hey, Julius, you had that terrific second half, but what about Austin and what he's meant in this fourth quarter of these last few games? It seems like he he's becomes a different player in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he's extremely confident. Uh, obviously, he's a confident player, but uh, yeah, especially these last two games, he's hit some some tremendous, uh, tremendously big shots, and uh, they've been huge for us uh, down the stretch. So uh, I'm so happy for him. Um, you know, I want him to keep playing with that energy, that confidence, because it brings a, a whole dynamic for us with, with him coming off the bench and, uh, and finishing the game like that. So it's been amazing. <clears throat> Next question comes from Rebecca Harlow on Mystery Network. Julius, you've touched on the fact that you've come back in tremendous shape. That's something that you've taken a lot of pride in. You did a lot of running this summer, but can you actually take me inside of your routine in terms of that? Were these track workouts, were these endurance workouts? What was it that is allowing you to play the way that you are right now? Uh, honestly, I, I call it the, my team back in Dallas, uh, the dream team, honestly, because uh, between Mel, uh, Melvin Sanders and, and Tyler Ralph, they really pushed me. Um, obviously, we had a, a longer break than usual. And uh, for me, it was a great game plan going into the summer, um, you know, with those two guys uh, pushing me, not just in the weight room or in the treadmill conditioning, but uh, Tyler also pushing me on the court uh, for me to come back in the best shape and be able to play these type of minutes uh, and play hard. So uh, for me, it's, it's been great. And then mentally uh, being able to push myself uh, uh, mentally, you know, um, it's not just about, you know, the physical aspect, but mentally, 
uh, being able to work off the court and and uh, push myself and you know just have a great mindset coming into the game. So uh, it's, it's been amazing. Next question comes from Steph Bondi, Daily News. Hey, Julius, um, when, when you're having these type of games, especially down the stretch and you guys are on fire, do you do you ever think like, wow, like if, if the fans were here, this would be crazy? Yeah, I said it earlier. Uh, it's unfortunate, like I said. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, the NBA is doing a great job of keeping us all safe, but uh, I mean, this team is different. Uh, we're, we have a great energy, a great confidence about us, and it's unfortunate, you know, our fans can't experience it. I know the guard, garden will be rocking. Uh, that's what we all signed up for. So, uh, hopefully, sooner than later, it'll happen. But yeah, for sure, we, we're definitely missing our fans. We have time for two more questions. Our next question comes from Mike Borkinov, the Athletic. Hey, Julius. Um, with with Austin, it seems like he's not only hitting those big shots in the fourth quarter, but like he wants to have the ball. What kind of benefit does it bring to have a guy who's kind of like looking for those shots in the fourth? It's amazing. Uh, we want all our guys playing with that confidence down the stretch. Uh, and, you know, he's like I said, he has that confidence to take that shot uh, to make it. So uh, with me, you know, I have the confidence to, to, to pass on the ball or, or whatever set of screen and coach has the confidence to call plays. So um, it's amazing, you know. Um, Confidence, confidence, confidence. We'll keep saying it. <laughs> Next question, our last question comes from Steve Popper, Newsday. Hey, Julius, on that same subject, uh, there was a, there was a play where you had looked like an open three, and you instead looked for him and, and found him. Were you just trying to ride him at that point? Yeah, he had like four or five straight. I don't know how many he hit <laughs> at that point, but shit, you know, uh, they give me the ball. I'm just gonna try to uh, try to make the right play in this situation. I think he had throw it back, and. Uh, Gobert was in the lane, so I just wanted to get a dribble handoff and get him, get him another action, get him another shot. So, uh, you know, he had another big one. It was huge for us. Thank you, Julius. Yes, sir. I'll let y'all. Hey, Austin, obviously just spoke to you on the floor, but when you take a look at what Julius Randall has been doing for your team, I mean, how would you describe, you know, the next level that he's bringing it? And at what point do you start talking about all-star aspirations for him? Well, he's played at that level so far. Um, he, you know, the biggest uh, surprise for me has been his vision, um, his willingness to pass, um, and his conditioning. You know, he's in he's in incredible shape. Um, you know, for him to be doing that, he plays most of the game. He does it on both ends. He's talking, so he's been great for us. He's been great, and uh, you know, yeah, he's playing at an all-star level. You can't deny that, not at all. So we we need him to keep going for sure. Next question comes from Mike Vaccaro, New York Post. So can you just describe what it was like when you guys were falling into that hole on the bench and, and what it was like on the bench and on the floor as you guys kind of methodically came back? Yeah, there, there was no, uh, there was no uh, panic. Um, it just seemed like guys started to get a sense of urgency and it seemed like everybody just started talking to each other. Like, listen, let's just, let's just try to hunt them down, you know, point by point. We can't get it back in one play. We don't need home run plays. Let's just play basketball. You know, at halftime, I was telling everybody, let's just play, let's have some fun, man. Let's just go play basketball. Don't think about this or that. And it just seemed like that's what everybody did. Everybody just started having fun. Everybody just started, uh, you know, competing. And then, um, you know, one thing led to another, and then there was a ball game again. So uh, it just shows you our spirit and our growth. You know, it's a young team. So for us to do that versus a team like this, a top tier caliber playoff team, that's pretty impressive. Our question <clears throat> comes from Bruce Beck, NBC. Austin, do you thrive on, on having the ball in your hands in big moments? And, and part two for you is, did you really go to the gym on your off day? Of course I went. Um, to answer your first question, yes, I, I love I love the stage. Um, that's why I, I honestly, I, I said it before. I, I know every player says that when they come here that they want to play on the stage, but I really do. I thrive on it. You have to be okay with missing the shots. You have to be okay with making the wrong play or the right play. You know, when, when you have the ball in your hands at the end of the game, you can't worry about the makes or misses or the turnovers. You got to trust yourself, and then you got to live with the outcome. You got to be able to take praise and then take criticism. So, um, you know, we have multiple guys I feel like that can do that. So, that gives me more confidence that I can drive it. It doesn't have to be a shot. It could be you know kicking it out to someone, and I trust we have multiple guys that can hit big shots, and then. Um, yeah, yesterday I went. Yesterday I went to the. Uh, I went to the gym. She wasn't too happy about it. We don't get a lot of days off, but um, you know, 
it's just we, we have so much going for us right now as a team that you just you want to be in the gym. Next question comes from Steve Popper, Newsday. Hey Austin, you mentioned you know enjoying the stage here. Um, when you have a night like this as a team and yourself, can you imagine what that fourth quarter would feel like if there was Man. twenty thousand fans here? I keep trying to imagine it. You know, I just try to imagine when I used to play against this team um, and the energy in this building and how just unreal it is. So I can't wait. You know, they're going to be back here eventually. Obviously, we have to continue to do our part and wear a mask. Um, and continue to listen to you know the proper people who know what they're talking about, and hopefully, down the line we can get people back you know uh, back in here because you know that's that's the best place to play basketball, and everybody knows it. You know, you play basketball in the Madison Square Garden, there's nothing like it. You know, so this is my first game as a Nick tonight, and I didn't have the fans in here, but I could just just be on that court with those lights coming down. Um, you know, the dark stands, it's just nothing like that. So, I had a fun time. We have time for two more questions. The next question comes from Steph Bondi, Daily News. Hey, Austin. Um, to underscore, how, you know, even as a kid, how much confidence you had, Thibodeau just shared a story about um, when you were a young kid with the Celtics in 2008, you used to challenge Kevin Garnett to one on one. Do you, what do you remember about that? And, you know, whatever you can share about that story. I mean, yeah, I grew up, you know, Idolizing all these guys. I mean, we're talking about Kevin Garnett, you know, Paul Pierce, um, you know, Ray Allen. Those are the three guys I kind of, you know, looked up to growing up just, you know, in Boston, at least when I'd go visit. You know, I didn't go up there a lot, so I didn't get to see those guys a lot. But every time I did, I would try to compete with them. And, you know, in my crazy mind, I thought I was better than them at the time, even though I was nowhere near. Those are Hall of Famers. I was. That's not even a conversation. But in my crazy mind, I thought I was. And. It was fun. They loved that. They loved that about me. And um, I just loved it. I used to just watch them. I used to watch their routines. I used to watch how they approach practice, you know, probably things they probably didn't think I did, but um, just because those guys are great. Um, so yeah, I, I, I cherish all those memories. Our last question comes from Mike working the athletic. Hey, Austin. Um, haven't been around the league for a while. I've been on good teams and bad teams. When, and how can you tell if you're on a good team? And do you think that this Knicks team is a good team? Of course, I think it's a good team. I never say we're nothing else but good. You know what I mean? I, I don't care who we are, what we are, who we have, don't have. I'll never go into the floor thinking we don't have a chance to win a game. I don't understand that, that mindset. I don't understand people who think like that. I've been on bad teams before. This is not one. I can, I can promise you that. I don't know where we'll end up. We have so much work to do. It's really early in the year. But I do know the spirit is different. Um, the willingness to work and learn is different. Uh, from management to coaching is different. I mean, this is not the next team that y'all are, you know, whatever y'all have been covering. This is not, you know, we have a whole different thing here. We have a lot of work to do. So I'm not saying we're this, you know, but you can tell when something's going in the right direction. And this is strongly going in that direction. So we got a lot of work to do and we got to continue to get better. But I, I like where we're at, man. We got young guys that are hungry. Um, and, and, and listen, and that's a rare commodity these days. So I'm very happy and I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be here in New York and play for this team in, in front of these fans. Um, I'm very thankful. Thank you, Austin. Thank you guys.